Let's get this shot as well. How about we try this out as well? Let's get on the swing and we're gonna try the vertical shot doing this. Why not? Let's give it a shot. Action. Today, let's take a look at this fascinating effect that's been used in some of the most iconic films of all time. And it's called the vertigo effect. The vertigo effect is an in-camera effect that distorts perspective and creates disorientation. The classic way to create this effect is to pull the camera away from the subject while zooming in with the lens. You can also pull the camera closer and zoom the lens out. During the zoom, there is a continuous perspective distortion. The background appears to change in size relative to the subject. That perspective change without a corresponding size change in the subject leads to a very strong emotional impact. The film Vertigo, released in 1958, directed by Alfred Hitchcock, was the first film to use the Vertigo effect. When filming the film Vertigo, the director of photography of the second unit, Erman Roberts, came up with the idea of using the dolly and zoom simultaneously. However, the cost of using the dolly and zoom on the camera on real Sears was estimated to be $50,000. As it costs a lot to use a big apparatus to lift the camera at the top of the stairs and counterweight it, as well as holding it up in space. I did a bit more research and the camera that they used in Vertigo was the Michel VistaVision camera. Then Hitchcock suggested, since there are no characters in the scene and it's simply a viewpoint, that they could create a miniature of the stairway and lay it on its side. However, a fun fact is, Erman Roberts, the person who achieved this shot, didn't even receive an on-screen credit for this film. Yeah. My favorite vertigo effect is the one in which the person remains the same size. So let's discover a bit more about how the distortion works in this specific kind of vertigo effect. All you need is a camera with a zoom lens, a still life subject, a nice background scene, and ideally, a grid pattern overlay for you to reference for the composition. First, let's take a photo of the still life subject with the lens at its widest angle setting and make a note of how big the subject looks on the grid pattern. Next, step back for about five to 10 steps, zoom in so that the subject is in the same size and position in frame as the first shot and take another photo. Now, let's take a look at these two photos. The background in the first scene is extended with the objects behind the subject looking smaller and farther away from camera. In the second photo, the same background looks larger and closer to the camera. When we operate a vertigo effect, we're creating a smooth transition between the two extremes of these two photos. There's also a calculation formula that you can follow, but we're not gonna go through how to use this calculation because now you can do it easily on your smartphone. Okay, so we're here in the park now and we're gonna try out this vertigo effect with our phone. And we have our subject, Andres, right here. So what we're trying to film here is a vertigo shot uh, where we have Andres standing here. He has a very fine tasting cup of coffee and he takes a sip and it takes him away. He transcends from this reality to a different reality. What we're gonna be doing now is that we're gonna be moving out while we zoom in. And that's gonna create that vertigo effect. And three, two, one, action. Close. I, have to, I, have, I didn't move that much, I need to move more. All right. Okay, you, oh, no, no, stop. We wanna keep our zoom at max. One more time, let's go for another one. Good. That's good. All right, so this took a few tries, but we finally got the shot that we wanted. Let's go back and see how it came out. We hope you enjoyed learning about the vertigo effect as much as we enjoyed researching and sharing it with you. Thanks for tuning in, and as always, let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And I'll see you in the next video.